Hey there and welcome to the next class-ish video on uh, SQL for data analytics and data scientists and I'm gonna share just things that I think are important to know and of course it's always important to dive in deeper but these are the things that I'm using a lot in my work as a data scientist and we will use BigQuery SQL notation for that. I think BigQuery is pretty convenient especially to try things on your own and to be able to access it, you do need a Gmail account, but I think almost anyone had one at some point. So let's get into date manipulation, time manipulation, and string manipulation today in our analysis. Those things are actually ones that I have to do often and I have to Google often because I often forget exactly how to I don't know, write a date sub, which interval can I write? Should it be day or days or week or weeks? And I need to, you know, check around a little bit, especially if I had a gap more than two months since last time I used a date sub, for example, function. It doesn't always stay in my brain. There is not so much space there to hold all this information. So just gonna go through some of the common things where we need to do different format for different dates and different groupings for different dates. So we'll get back into our imaginary data set for an imaginary data on a certain app that has products which you can buy, it can be a subscriber, it can be user, you can also do things in the app and some of those things will be recorded and right now we will actually look into these um, metrics or these data sets so we will look into user events data set this data set has a user id obviously because we need to know what, what which user did what we see the timestamp uh, and we have the name of the event and the name of the event type, which are strings. So let's have a preview of this data set. There's many more rows than we had before. And we see that user IDs are repeated and the users did things in our app, for example. Um, there are events such as app closed, um, app open, main screen, order screen, questionable naming that I came up with, but you know, it's not always perfect, even in a big company's namings are really hard. So we know at what time exactly, uh, in which time zone, which user did what and what was the type of that event. Uh, now let's look into this data set. And one of the things that are really, really common, especially if you need to do like ad hoc um, data analysis is grouping by, for example, hours. And we only have timestamp here. So how do we get there? And that's the thing that I tend to Google a lot. Um, we need to format this timestamp and we need to extract the date and the hour from that timestamp as date hour from this table. We can also format this query so it's nicer. Well, we can limit by thousands. It's always good to have a limit if you have a big data set, but we don't. So here you see that if they did it at 01, 05, 05, for example, we don't have these numbers and we kind of group them into hours. Uh, that would make more sense if we want to count, for example. Um, So here we count how many records we have for this specific hour in our events table and that would make more sense uh, for the formatting. Uh, but let's say we want to not just count the total number of events but we only want to know how many times our app was open during this time frame and here we can still use the count however we do need to use the previously used and learned case when statement and we need to and we need to filter on event name we've seen that we have the name app open 
out there. So we check when the event name is app open, then we count one. Else we don't count and we end this and call it um, as app open events. When I write things on, I don't need this. Uh, when I write things like this and talk at the same time, I often think that I have dyslexia because boy, do I make a lot of errors. And here we want to group by one or, you know, the date hour. Uh, and let's say we want to also order by date hour just to see um, in proper chronological order how many app opens do we have formatting so that it looks nicer and now we see that for example for one o'clock on the first of December we had two events for uh, one o'clock on the third of December we had one event we have really people who are <laughs> very active at night so maybe we don't actually work with UTC time zone. We have maybe some users that are in a different time zone. That's day for them, but we track it at night, which is a pretty important thing to figure out if you want to show the dashboard with these numbers and these hours to your product manager. And they think that this is, for example, the proper translation from the user time to the real world time. So they might actually think that the user is super active at night and um, maybe not. Maybe users are just in a different time zone and uh, their tracking that you're using is not correct. A lot of those different small things are really important when you're working with data. It's not something we really learn when you're working with like pristine data in universities or something that's available maybe uh, from Google or other sources that provide data. But when you work with data that's created through the company, uh, you really need to know or think, always keep in mind all those small things. That's why there is no space for proper uh, syntaxes for format timestamp or other things in my head. It's all those do I know if there is no null values? Do I know if this is the right time zone? All those small things really take up a lot of your brain space. So here, for example, yes, we've ordered and counted up open events. Nice. Uh, different uh, function that we can use to actually just extract date is the date function. And it's so much easier than this format timestamp. Um, because um, it's just super simple. We also need to group by date. And um, yeah, perfect. We have the date and the date hour. Uh, having both of these can be, for example, useful for Data Studio where you can have different granularity and you might need to filter on date uh, in one thing, but in one of the views of the dashboard, but you may want to be able to show the hours or even the minutes on another view of your dashboard. So it uh, can be useful to have both, but not always. Uh, maybe we also want to group this by month and another way of working with dates or for formatting the dates and timestamps is using the function extract. So here we extract month from, oh, we don't, yeah, we do write from timestamp as month. And also need to group by that. And here we go. We also know the month. Don't have the year, but the same thing works for the year and the day. And maybe the week. Let's let's check that. As a week. That will be a week number. Mm, right. always tend to rush when running my queries. So yeah, we do also have week number here. So 
for example, 3rd of December was week 48, but 4th is week 49. Be careful because this week is might ne not necessarily be the week number that you're used to. Different countries have different counting for when the week starts. So there is ISO notation week number, but there is also weeks that start on Sunday or weeks that start on Monday. So here I can't really this derived from the week number whether the 3rd of December was a Sunday or a Saturday. Again, some things to think about. So now we know the month, but um, these data is still keeping the date, which can be a bit too granular. So we will actually extract only the hour from the uh, timestamp here and we'll use the month again and we will get the for example year again because that would make sense right if you have a month and you should have a year otherwise well, well it still can bring some value uh, the analysis that you can do but here we will only look at the month and the year and we order by let's say month um, no order by year and then month and let's look at that we have two years 2022 and 2023 in 2022 we only had events in December in 2023 in January and um, in some of the uh, hours we had no app open events because we still you know include these hours since we're not like joining in any other table we have the count of zero for all the hours that are available in this event table and then for one o'clock we have a lot of openings of our app at one o'clock which does make me think that our our users are not in the right time zone. They're not recorded for the right time zone, but maybe we have an app that's relevant for night use, like, I don't know, alarm app, maybe. So let's say here we want to exclude the December because maybe it's not representative or we change something in the app. So we need to only look at the most recent data. And here I'm going to use a function that I used like so often so incredibly often and it's the current date so we only want to get all the events from user events where the date is in the last three weeks or in the last four weeks or in the last i don't know 30 days you know you're you're getting <laughs> what i'm trying to say this is the most kind of often thing that i need to do and sometimes i still forget how to write this notation um, because you know there's not enough space in my brain for that but uh, super often you want to just look at the most recent things and you want to have a query that you can repeatedly look at the most recent things so you don't want to hard code the dates there doing like the date between certain date and certain date you might want to just look at the last 30 days every time you run the query um, also super useful for dashboards or for any kind of pipelines where you repeatedly create data sets so that you don't need to you know constantly change the dates there you can just use this beautiful fantastic function here we actually see that we don't always have the proper event name so it's not always app closed and app open but we have some wonky weird app open events and we want to be able to still extract and compare them because we did not actually add these in the previous query where we had the uh, event name equals app open so how do we do that there's many different ways you can do that and the first one for example is to using regex expressions the hated a little bit regex event expressions um, where we can you know extract extract the uh, different parts of the string based on the regex regular expression 
Often they work really well for some specific use cases. For example, when we have the app open within the semicolons using this regular expression where we match the text between the first um, semicolon and the last semicolon in the string that we have, uh, which will return the correct app open. But this one, as you can see here, doesn't really work for other situations where we have other strings or don't have semicolon um, in the beginning. It doesn't work when we have in the beginning, but not in the end. So it does assume that in the end somewhere there will be a semicolon. So I will return you the app open L, D, J, M, and B, blah, blah, blah. We can adjust these regular expressions, of course, but what I found useful the most and what I actually use the most is not be necessarily extracting, sorry, is not necessarily extracting the value from the string, but also just checking that this app open is somewhere in the string to be able to calculate the app open events. And for that, I use like comparison. So when you want to have a comparison with not strict notation, where it's not strictly app open, but it can have app open within the string, you can write it like this. So app open, and then there is a percentage sign before and percentage sign after, which means that there can be anything coming before or not the app open, and there can be anything coming after, which is you know what we have here. And let's see, we should get different answer. Yeah, so we do have now answer for the 4th of January with five events that have been, have contained app open within them. But still, in some cases, you want to also have the proper event name. So you want to extract these number of uh, these, sorry, <laughs> the string from the wonky event name. And for that, we can use the extract function from regex as the event name two, for example. And here uh, can be pretty much equal to just assigning a value of app open for the rows where event name is like app open. It's kind of the same where you just extract app open from the um, event name. So here you see when we do have app open count, we have the correct app open name, but when we don't, it's null for this. Uh, reg ex extract because you can't find it there, obviously. All right, thank you for watching this part where we worked with dates and strings a little bit. And there is, of course, plenty of other different manipulations that you can do and that are sometimes needed to be done. And luckily, BigQuery has pretty good documentation. So there you can see how you can format timestamps in different ways. What does percentage hour, percentage day, percentage uh, month look like there. What does it mean? How else can you deal with uh, strings? And generally, I check there more frequently than I Google or um, check on Stack Overflow because it's just so easy. So do recommend you look through different manipulations with time, date, and strings because they are pretty common when you do data analysis. And I'll see you for the next video where we'll look into arrays and dealing with arrays, which are also pretty common, and window functions. So hope that was useful and have a nice day.